Okay, so first of all, I'd like to thank God for this opportunity, and I would also like to thank Thorat, Loyal, and my dad for this opportunity. Um, I would also like to ask my brother to come stand with me because he'll be reading out uh, the portions of scripture that I'll be mentioning. <laughs> yes, clap for my brother. <laughs> so, I feel like last week the message by the young pastor from Arizona about praise and worship brought me a lot of encouragement and um, renewment and I'm sure it brought the same to many others if you were there to hear the message. Um, I am my father's daughter so this is a little disclaimer that what I share today is nothing new so no new information but just a friendly reminder um, of what is already in the Bible. If you are going to take mental notes I would title this if you're lost find Jesus. Um, we are going to get a little bit personal and I want to share a bit about my testimony and my journey with God to y'all and what he did to my life and how he changed my life and what he's done for everyone here. Um, before I get into that, I just want to quickly mention my mom and my dad. These two have been the biggest encouragers um, and they've been by my side aside from the Holy Spirit. Both of them exemplify the love and the life of Christ to my two brothers and I and my mom, she fights for her family. She engages in prayer at every given opportunity. And now for my dad, when people look at my dad, um, they see a mighty man of God. And although that is true, he did not get to where he is today simply by his own strength. But rather, it was by the work of God. And my dad diligently serves and the power that is inside of him. The same power that dwells inside of him is also in us and each and every single person here. Um, so a few days ago, I was speaking to my dad at our dinner table and before he headed off to work. And we were just discussing and conversing about a few questions that I had. And at one point, he acknowledged what God did for him. And he was talking about his old nature, which involved excessive drinking and smoking before he accepted Christ back into his life. Um, if you're interested in knowing more about his testimony, then I suggest that you talk to him yourself. Um, and he would also be um, happy to answer any of your questions or confusions or what you might have and sit down with you and talk you through it. I would also advise that you speak to our pastors throughout Lalamu and throughout Abraham if you have any questions as well. Um, so we're going to get into my testimony now. So as a young child, I used to believe that God was distant and that I could never attain a relationship with God, let alone keep it. It felt like nothing that I could do could satisfy God, and I did not fully understand or grasp the concept of who he was. I still have trouble now fully understanding God because he is God, and you cannot fit God into a box or a category um, and try to understand him without the Holy Spirit. When it came to church, I would come in every Sunday feeling empty and then leave feeling empty and hopeless, not because of my inadequacy to understand my own language, but because I was playing church essentially. You see, for a long time in my head, I would mix up a relationship with God with religion, and those two are not the same. And that was where I was falling short, and I'm slowly, I started disassociating little by little. Not many people know this about me, but I struggled and dealt a lot with anxiety, depression, anger, and bitterness. I found it difficult to love myself and to love other people. I was on a road to destruction, having a lot of invasive negative thoughts, and it would occupy a lot of my time. Um, as the years went by and I grew up, I started to see a change in my dad. I saw a broken man that fully gave his life to Jesus and invited the Holy Spirit into his heart. Through Jesus, uh, my dad was used in ways that he could never imagine. Um, my memory is kind of foggy, so I don't, um, I believe that the turning point of my life clicked me inside and realized that I needed to come to God, and I needed God. Not only did I need Him, but I desired a real authentic relationship with Jesus that was not forced and that was not fake. In my pursuit of God, I found that I was not chasing after a thing, but rather I was chasing a person, the person of Jesus Christ. As we seek Jesus in our day-to-day -day life, He overwhelms us with the revelation of His glory and His love. These two things, they go together and you cannot separate them. It says in 1 John 4, starting at verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another because love is from God. And everyone who loves has been born, born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. 
God loves was revealed among us, and in this way God sent his one and only Son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be anointing sacrifices for our sins. So, no amount of words can completely capture the core essence of such an infinite God. Trying to understand God's glory with first understanding his love is like trying to swim in the deep end of the pool and having no knowledge of how to even float, let alone swim. I use this example because I can't swim. Um, I was once pushed into the deep end of the pool and I had a near drowning experience and it was really scary. I'm sure that you know that I dedicated two years of my life to send a school called Summit. In my freshman year of Summit, I ended up having a series of revelations of God's love, and he was showing me and revealing to me his love in moments where I did not deserve his love. He does not have to love us, but he does. Because he is that's who he is. He is love. There is not anything that we did to deserve God's love, but there is not a thing that we will do to ever stop him from loving us, and that is what makes him so glorious. And this brings me to my first point. Um, Christ died for us. He made um, all things new and won the victory. And it says in Romans 6, 20 to 22. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free with the regard to righteousness. So what the fruit was produced then from the things you are now ashamed of. The outcome of these things is death. But now since you have been set free from sin and have become enslaved to God, you have your fruit which results in the sanctification and the outcome is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So this is where I got it wrong in the past. Here it says that eternal life is a gift from God in Jesus our Lord. Have you ever had to earn a gift? Have you ever had to earn a gift? <laughs> Um, no. Um, did you ever have to? Did you ever receive a gift and later was told that you need to pay ba that gift back? If you did, then I'm sorry to say, but that was not a gift. The precious blood of Jesus not only washed away our sins, but the Scripture says that we are set free from our sins. Salvation is a free gift for you and I, but it came with a very costly price of the blood of Jesus. Similarly, in Ephesians 2, starting at verse 4, it says. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive in Christ, even though uh, we were dead in, tre uh, in trespass, you are saved by grace. He also raised us up with his him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kingdom to us in Christ. For you are saved by the grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the, from the gift of God, not from works so that no one can boast, for we are his worksmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Mm -hmm. I want to reiterate that salvation is never of ourselves or our own work. It is not something that we can achieve by what we can do what we can offer, but it's something that God did because he loves us. And because of his mercy, we are not deserving of his love, but he loves us. He loves you and I. This love is different, which brings me to my second point. So my second point is find true intimacy with God, knowing religion versus relationship. We're all young people here. It doesn't matter how old you are or what your age is, you're still young. I want to clarify that God's love is different than what you and I experience or are used to every day. Every day, we see love clearly um, between friends and family. We say, I love you to our boyfriends or our girlfriends, but the love that God has for us is so much deeper and sweeter than any of that. Before I gave my life back to Christ, I had to no reconciliation or understanding of his love for me and for other people in general. And I mentioned before, I saw God as a distant being that was impossible to attain a relationship with, but that was far from the reality of it. God, Jesus, is the embodiment of love and what it means to love. Embodiment just means a representation of something that is visible, something that you can see. In a similar way, 
God took on a physical form. In 2 Corinthians 5, starting at verse 16, it says, From now on then, we do not know anyone from a worldly perspective. Even if we have known Christ from a worldly perspective, yet now we have no longer known him in this way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and the new, the new has come. Everything is from God and has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation that is in Christ God, was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And he has committed the message of reconciliation to us. This was God's plan from the very beginning, to be reconciled to him. And he made this possible through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus took on the form of sin and died in our places. The death on the cross was meant for you and I, but it was Jesus that paid it all. Not only did he pay it, but he rose again triumphantly in victory, defeating sin and death. God desires to be in a relationship with you. He wants your heart. God knitted you and formed you in your mother's womb. He has known everything that you have thought, everything that you have spoken, and everything that you have done. You think that you can hide these things from other humans, and I'll be honest, you can most of the time. But you can't hide these things from God. If there are some things that you need to confess to God, then do it. Get alone with God and truly repent before Him. He wants to speak with you, and how you do so is that you open the Word of God. You open His Word, and you read it, and you spend time with Him. Now, this is um, my finally my third point, which is walk in the freedom that God freely gave to you. Um, and it is given to us in the form of his Holy Spirit to empower, to guide us, and to teach us. The minute that I got to the very end of myself, where I was at my lowest point, and at the moment, that was where God met me and his Holy Spirit had stepped in and taken over. Ever since then, I have been, and for the most part, steadily walking with God. Now, we live in a world that is broken and riddled with sin and darkness. There are many surrounding influential voices that are telling us what is right and what is wrong because of the platforms that they have created for themselves in their own strength. There is a portion of scripture in 2 Timothy where Paul is encouraging and challenging Timothy to continue to remain faithful and have hope in Jesus. In the same way, as used today, we have that light inside of us and are meant to be that light for other people, the people that don't know or don't have the light. We can see the evidence of what a life apart from God looks like. It looks like destruction, but God gives us his Holy Spirit to allow to have this desire to want to serve God and to love God and to honor God by living our lives in honor to God. And the Holy Spirit is the only person that can reach into the hard exterior of our hearts, reaching past the deepest and darkest places of our hearts to pull out the parts of our hearts that only he can mend and heal. I mentioned before that I struggled with depression, anxiety, bitterness, and anger. But God, it was God who touched those places and healed me. In Jesus, I found peace that surpassed all understanding. I found rest that could only be provided by Jesus. I was broken, but he made me new and he made me whole. I was lost, but I found Jesus. The moment I gave my life back to Christ was the best decision I ever made. We as Christians believe and have faith in God for eternal life. So I encourage you all that are here right now listening to stop looking at what you do and worrying about the areas where you think you fall short and rather start fixing your eyes back upon God. This includes myself because sometimes I forget and I need to be reminded too. I want to be clear. Following Jesus does not mean that you are spared from the devastation of hardship, the devastation of pain, or the devastation of suffering. We are guaranteed to experience those things. But God gave us the promise of his grace and mercy for every new day. Stop thinking that your problems or your struggles are bigger than he is. God is so much bigger than what we think he is. Come back and be honest with yourself and get right with God. Don't just go to church and read your Bible because your parents tell you to do it. So, but 
Do it because you desire to know the God that made you. Allow the Holy Spirit to step into your heart and take control of your life. I also want to mention that everyone's walk with God is different. Your walk with God is going to look different than mine. It's going to look different than my dad. It's going to look different than Pastor Lalamu or Pastor Abraham. But never settle for anything less than God's best for you. This includes your decisions, your life, your daily life, your relationship. And acknowledge God in everything that you do and give him the honor and glory that he deserves. 